Just over a month ago, I picked up the Nishiki Colorado Comp, and this is the guy who's been riding it. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, Josh here again with Daily Mountain Bike Rider, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Nishiki Colorado Comp, how it's held up, and what upgrades have been made to it. But first, who's this guy? Uh, I'm Isaac, I go to high school here in town, and I have been Josh's guinea pig for the last like few months. Yeah, I, I've known Isaac for a while, and uh, I knew that he would be a great person to test out the Colorado and really put it through its paces. But Isaac, tell everybody about the bike you had before you started riding the Colorado. So the bike I had previously was a 2014 Diamondback Overdrive. It had about 110 millimeters of travel on the fork as uh, a SR Sontour XCR and it had some hub issues and some crank issues that didn't make it the best bike in the world. Yeah, when you push the bike around, the cranks move with the rear tire because the hub might have a few broken paws in it. Along with that, it's a three by drivetrain, so it's noisy. It's kind of a cross country bike. It was fine, but mm -hmm. it definitely was not great. So when I saw the Nishiki on sale, I knew that it would be a great bike for me to buy and test out because it was a great deal. But I also thought, hey, you know what I'll do? I'll pass this on to Isaac to test for me. And I made him a deal where when he sells the overdrive, uh, whatever money he gets from that, if he gives to me, that covers the cost of the Colorado. So Isaac, first off, let's talk about what did you think about the Nishiki when you first rode it compared to the bike you have? Yeah, so my first impressions uh, were that it was definitely, it was a really rugged feel with the plus size tires and the um, the different geometry. Uh, my previous bike had some really cross country style geometry. This one felt a lot more like a, a legit mountain bike. Um, it was super fun to get up in the air. It feels really light even though it's all aluminum. Um, and the like I said, the plus size tires kind of helped that. And um, yeah, it just felt like it could pretty much do anything a full, uh, full suspension could do. And so you said it, it feels a little more rugged. How'd you like the drivetrain compared to the three by? It was so, so, so much quieter than the three by drivetrain. And um, I mean, you never, you're never worried about what gear you're in with a one by. It's super easy to maneuver and you have more handlebar space without the, um, without the extra shifter on the right side. Yeah, and Isaac, I think the one question I would have for you that most people would have is the overdrive you had, the Diamondback, is a really good entry-level bike. Um, I would feel pretty comfortable on it. Going to the Nishiki, did it feel um, less comfortable or less legit, or was it like an upgrade? It definitely felt like an upgrade. It just felt cleaner. Um, there was a lot going on with the three by uh, and 29er, you got those big wheels and yeah, it just felt like there was too much happening. The Nishiki just felt simple and smooth. Awesome. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the upgrades that we made. After I rode the bike, there were some things that quickly stood out to me that would be worth upgrading. Isaac, what was the first upgrade? So our first upgrade uh, was popping off the dork disc so we didn't look like dorks pedaling around up there on a cheapo bike. I already look like a dork enough, so <laughs> it helps to take that off. Okay, yeah. so the dork disc off, and what was the next thing? Uh, the next thing we upgraded was the bar and stem. So yeah, we put on some race face bars and stem. I had them laying around 780 millimeters wide, I believe. And the biggest thing is the stem's a lot shorter, so yeah. it gives you a little better feel on the bike. Uh, what was the next big upgrade? Uh, and then we just now we put on some new brakes and the first ones felt super good. The new ones should be better because they're um, hydraulic. The What it comes stock with is some mechanical Shimano brakes, which are good but could be could be improved. And the last thing uh, we got today was it came with a, it comes with a 27.2 diameter seat post. And the one that comes with is super flimsy and my butt might have bent it. So it was very difficult to push down. So we got one that fits the bike better and might have had to get rid of some water bottle mounts in the seat post so that it can go all the way down. But now you're basically set to go. Um, I think the bike is, is, has every upgrade it needs to be awesome. Um, in an ideal world, Isaac, where money was no issue, what other upgrades would you like to put on this bike? Uh, I would probably put on some tubeless tires. Um, it's got some kind of heavy tubes in the plus size uh, tires and it would sell, save me a lot of money. Um, I wouldn't be popping stuff all over the place. For sure. Uh, the only bummer is I think we would have to upgrade the wheels as well because they're not tubeless yeah. ready. What other upgrade? Uh, if I could put anything on it, I'd put on a new fork, um, which isn't necessary because it's got a good one on there, but it is a little stiff. Um, but really, if you are willing to, you can do pretty much anything. And then last but not least, I would highly encourage a dropper seat post. The only bummer 
Since it's a 27.2, PNW Components makes a 110 millimeter dropper, uh, but it is externally routed, and I think it would still, well, 110 is a good amount of drop, the more the merrier. So anyway, Isaac, I'm super stoked that you're having this bike now. The bike is officially Isaac's. He's gonna keep testing it, and so far, Isaac, how many times have you ridden it, and how's it held up? Uh, I've ridden it uh, three or four times. Um, it definitely held up well. I mean, the trails are really getting beaten on this winter, and it's, yeah, it, it just feels smooth like you're riding on a groomed trail. Yeah, and the best part is the derailleur still hasn't fallen off. Yep. <laughs> There's been no other issues. I really think the first bike I got was a total fluke. So anyway, we're gonna keep you guys updated on how the bike's holding up. Isaac's gonna keep using it. I might have to borrow it to abuse it, um, but I'm super stoked to update you guys on how this thing goes. All right, well, Isaac, thanks for being here today. Yeah, you bet. Thanks you guys for watching. You know what time it is. Don't spend too much time watching two guys talk in a garage all about mountain bikes, but get out there, ride your bike, and Isaac, make sure you do it. Shred hard. No, every day. <laughs> Get out of here. See you guys. I had no idea what you were talking about. It's my outro. My outro. I never watch your videos to the end. <laughs> You're fired.